Okie dokie, it's retro time, lady. Okay, retro tech this week. Um, I'm going to highlight some more things from our celebrations of all things retro Mac ish. Love Apple stuff. I, I'm, I'm dancing on the line of maybe it's not exactly the merchandise. Awesome. So we have things like the Apple Newton. I'll talk about that in a second. We have other things I feel there. Like the new, it's like, it's even like the next computers, it's kind of close. But, anyways, no. um, we do have some fun things. These are the Apple design speakers. Ooh. I think if it wasn't doing like the, the Mac heyday, right, of like 1985 to like yeah. 95, that that's fine. So um, these are all in the Adafruit collection. We also have the black speakers. Now, these were a special, somewhat more limited, rare edition. These paired well with the Apple CD, which we also covered. And then here is a clear Newton. This was super rare, and this was given away at a developer event by Apple when they wanted people to make applications and more for the Newton. Clear Aesthetic is super cool from the Adafruit collection. Then we have our box copy of HyperCard that was still sealed. We haven't cracked out the um, floppies, but um, this was kind of what started a lot of us on programming you used to use hypercard mm -hmm. a lot what did you make with hypercard we we're talking about this on I made games and i made like interactive like weird art stuff yeah and do you think this helped you on your path to where you are now totally it really? was my yeah it was one of my first programming languages it was, was probably my first um like true date declarative language previous ones were like scripting but like this one you know you had variables and you set them like i tried to learn um pascal but pascal you know because that was what people programmed apple computers in but it was oh. it was too difficult for me i couldn't um i didn't know what an integer was and i got really stuck because i didn't know what an integer was and so I, I kept using the word integer and i'm like i don't know what that is i think the closest thing now is like yeah there's like make code and everything but as far as like programming a lot of people are getting started with python and like block coding languages i'm a little worried i think that, that python doesn't have integers so yeah, we're being able to do i'm that. a little worried that there isn't something like hypercard there's like for, glitch for young and so you know what I mean? Like hyper, it was just a different time and place, and there wasn't internet at the. It wasn't there, yeah. and it was just before the, the, the idea of stacks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, anyways, um, I have a little two minute video that has um, it's from Computer Chronicles, and it has one. It has the creator of HyperCard, and it's a long video um, online. It's like twenty six minutes long. Well, not really that long. Um, but this is just a two minute clip, just to show you of like how interesting and powerful this is and there's still nothing quite like it so take it away uh like 1980 something hypercard what is it it's not hyper it's not even a card it's not quite system software it's not quite application software Tell us what the HyperCard is all about, Bill. Well, really simply put, HyperCard is a software erector set. It lets uh, non-programmers put together interactive information. Mm -hmm. uh, show okay. us how you actually do this, Bill. Um, you use cards that contain graphics and text and buttons. Mm -hmm. Here I've got a stack of cards and I can press on this button and it will take me to another card. Okay, and that button's particular function is get to the next card. Right, example. you can have lots of buttons to do different things. Okay. Buttons can do things like dialing the phone and taking you to cards and um, uh, lots of different Whatever things. Whatever you tell it to do. Yeah. Okay. Um, the cards are grouped together into stacks that you put on a floppy disk and can uh, share with somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, and you can organize it so that the, any card can jump to any other card. Is this where you get that notion of hypertext built into the hypercard system? Yeah, it's it's kind of the, the freedom to uh, organize the information according to how things are associated with each other, mm -hmm. not just according to the next card in the list. Right, right, right okay. Um, the buttons, as I said, can do lots of things. Here's one that makes a noise uh -huh. and sounds. Um, and you can have lots of different kinds of cards. The, the standard three by five card is a little weak metaphor, but mm -hmm. you can include things like a, an expense report or maybe a, a appointment book, mm -hmm. things like that. Lots of different kinds of things can be on cards. 
even little interactions. Here's a, here's a little keyboard that you could click on, and it makes uh, uh -huh. uh, sounds and moves the note accordingly. So you can do things within a card itself. A card is just not some right. information. Uh, what's real important is that cards contain both information and interaction. Right. All right. Um, so you know, watch our post post on uh, everywhere with the tag Marchintosh. Especially on Tumblr. Especially on Tumblr because that seems to be um, where the most people are sharing these type of projects. Also Mastodon, but either way, we link to all the places. Um, on Desk of Lady Ada, you showed the Prince Floppy project, which is. Uh, I do want to show this live though because it that that could look like a label. This is actually an LCD screen, so why don't you um, unplug it and plug it in? So this is a representation of what we have on archive.org. I'm going to back up, back up more. Sorry. Yeah, back up, back up, back up. Back up. Yeah, so it's a floppy. It's a 3D printed floppy. This is the Pi Portal project, and then when you plug it in, it displays. You saw Circuit Python fly yeah. real quick. It displays the um, the logo that Prince sent out on all these floppy disks a while ago. So I thought I would do is show you the um, archive.org page. So um, you can also go to our website. The print symbol has been salvaged from a 1993 floppy. Um, this is Neil. Neil's a big Prince fan. Had this, we were able to copy it. We were worried that this would destroy the disk. There's not that many left. And when Prince changed uh, his name to the artist formerly known as Prince, had to send out the font to all the journalists to say, if you're going to write about me, this is my name. So um, we uh, were able to duplicate it, get it to archive.org. I think you've got to go to archive.org forward slash details forward slash Prince underscore floppy. This is what the original floppy looks like. And so what we're doing is uh, preserving exactly what's on there and putting it on this, essentially it's a USB drive with a screen. Um, and we're gonna give this to Neil, who uh, was kind enough to to let us uh, mess with this to uh, get the the, the Yeah, we, well, you needed, you know, we had a PowerBook 150, which had an internal floppy drive that still worked, uh, which was like really good. I think we tested with a random different floppy to make sure that the floppy disk wouldn't damage the disks, so, like you could read and write yeah. from it. And then we, um, be carefully yeah the, worth the, noting the, this yeah. this is a yellow disc i'm sure they didn't have purple floppies at the time but ours mm -hmm. that we have mm -hmm. is uh purple and we're yes. going to send this over to and sparkly uh, and sparkles so we thought that was, we, we thought that was kind of cool um but if you think about it you could do this for anyone we wanted to make this as an, an idea for gifts so let's imagine there is something special that someone um remembers a game that they played um, and it was on, you know, you install it on a floppy. You can put it on there, give it to them, and you know, put the emulator on there. There's lots of th fun things you can do. Anywho, um, that's our retro stuff.